Here we have a physics problem that reads, a projectile is launched from a height of 30 meters at an angle of 20 degrees above the horizontal with a velocity of 45 meters per second. What is the speed of the projectile halfway down the cliff height and then right before it hits the ground? So here we have a physics problem. The first step to solving a physics problem is always to draw a picture. So here's my cliff. It's 30 meters tall. Here's my velocity vector for the initial velocity of my projectile. It's 45 meters per second. And it's launching at 20 degrees above the horizontal. So this angle is 20 degrees. And my projectile is going to do something like that. What we want is its velocity, no, we want its speed, at a point halfway down the cliff and then right before it lands. Now the speed is like the velocity. Velocity is a vector, so it has a direction. Speed does not have a direction. So to find the speed, we're going to have to find the velocity vectors at these two points and then find the magnitudes of those velocity vectors to find the speed. Now there's some other things we know. I'm going to call this upward direction, the positive y direction, and to the right, the positive x direction. You always want to state your directions when you do a physics problem. Now I'm going to say this initial launching point as an x-coordinate of 0, because it's the start of my path, and initial y of a positive 30 because it starts at an elevation of 30 meters. Now this thing is going to travel in both the x and the y directions. So the point halfway down the cliff height will have some unknown x direction. But it has a y coordinate of 15 because halfway down the cliff would be 15 above the ground. And then the landing point is going to have some unknown x-coordinate, but its y-coordinate is going to be 0, because now it's on the ground. Now looking at all this information we have, this is most likely a kinematics problem. Kinematics problems are problems that involve position, velocity, and acceleration. You can usually guess that this is a kinematics problem because it doesn't mention the mass of the projectile. Typically, if it doesn't give you the mass or it doesn't ask for the mass, then this would not be a momentum or an energy problem. Because typically, momentum and energy both involve the mass of the projectile. So we don't have a mass, so we're going to do kinematics. And there are three basic kinematics equations. The change in distance is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one-half times the acceleration times time squared. Another one would be the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance. And the third one is the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Now we have to remember that velocity and acceleration are vectors. So instead, we're going to change these three equations into six different equations. We're going to use these three equations for the y direction and these three equations separately for the x direction. So for part A, we're worried about this point right here. And let's figure out what we know. We have an initial velocity vector, but we haven't figured out what the velocity in the y direction or the x direction is. So maybe we should start with that. Let's draw a right triangle. 
The hypotenuse of our right triangle should represent our velocity vector. So this hypotenuse is 45 long. This angle is 20 degrees. And since this vector is moving up and to the right, I'm going to say the y version, or the y component, the yi, is moving upwards, or in the positive y direction. And likewise, the x is moving in the positive x direction, or to the right. Now to find my components, vyi and vxi, I use some trigonometry. vxi is equal to the hypotenuse length, so 45, times the cosine of 20 degrees. It's cosine because vxi is the side adjacent to our angle. And then likewise, vyi is equal to 45 sine 20 because vyi is the side opposite our angle. If you plug these into your calculator, you'll find vxi is 42.3 meters per second and VYI is 15.4 meters per second. Notice both of these are positive because they're both moving in the positive X and positive Y directions. So I go back to my equations. I've got VXI. So I know that and I know that and I know that. I also have VYI, I have that one, that one, and that one. What else do we know? We know our accelerations. There is no acceleration in the X direction. Nothing is influencing this projectile in the X direction. So I can say that AX, or the acceleration in the X direction, is equal to zero. And in the Y direction, it's accelerating due to gravity. So I'm going to say AY is equal to a negative 9.81. Now, gravity is negative here because previously I said that upward was the positive Y direction. Well, acceleration here is going downward. So since it's going downward, it's going in the negative direction. So I make my acceleration negative. So I, I know AX. So I know those, that, and that. I know AY, I know that, that, and that. But that's not enough information to solve any of these equations. I know my initial position, XI and YI. XI is 0 and YI is 30. So I know that, and I know that, and I know that, and I know that. Still not enough information to solve any of these equations. So let's go back to our last piece of information for part A, the final coordinates. I don't know x, but I do know y. My yf for this part of the problem is 15. So I have that, and I have that. Now don't forget what we're looking for. We're looking for the speed, or at least at first, the velocity. I can use either of the first two y equations. The first one, if I plug in everything, I can solve for time. The second one, if I plug in everything, I can solve for my final velocity in the y direction, which is what I want. So let's start with that equation. Vfy squared, the final velocity in the y direction squared is what I'm looking for. My initial, I found before, it's 15.4, so 15.4 squared, because it's VIY squared, plus 2 times the acceleration in the Y direction, which was a negative 9.81, and then times the change in distance. My final Y coordinate is 15, and my initial Y position is 30. Plug all of this into your calculator and you should find that the final velocity in the y direction squared is equal to 531, I say 0.5. Take the square root of both sides and you should find that our final velocity in the y direction, since we're taking the square root, is either 
positive or negative, 23 meters per second. Now it's positive or negative because we took the square root of both sides and when you take the square root you have to consider both the positive and negative possible answers. However, as our projectile is moving along, when it gets down to this point right here, it's moving in a negative y direction. So let's ignore the positive version of our answer because we know it has to be negative. So we found VFY. It's equal to a negative 23 meters per second. Now all I need is my final velocity in the x direction. Well, looking at my x equations, the first one, I need my final x position, which I don't know, and I need time, which I don't know. In the second equation, I'm looking for my final x velocity, but I don't know my final x position, so I can't solve for it. And in the third equation, I'm looking for my final x velocity, but I don't know time, so I still can't solve for that either. So none of my x equations are going to help me. So I need to go back to my y equations, and hopefully in one of my y equations, I can find either the final x position or the final time, so I can go back to my x equations and find my final x velocity. Well, these y equations are not going to give me my x position, but I can get the time. And the easiest equation to use is this third one. Remember, I just solved for VFY. So I know this. So in this third equation, the only thing I don't know is time. So this is the equation I'm going to use. So VFY is equal to a negative 23. That's equal to VIY, which I solved before, that's 15.4, plus the acceleration in the y direction, which is a negative 9.81 times time. Plug that into your calculator. You should find that T is equal to 3.9 seconds. So now that I know what t equals, I can go back to the third equation in the x direction and plug in for t. And I should be able to find my final velocity in the x direction. So vfx is equal to vix, my initial velocity in the x direction, which was 42.3, plus My acceleration in the x direction, which is 0, times my time, which is 3.9. Well, I didn't need to know my time after all, because anything times 0 is 0. So my final x velocity is equal to 42.3 meters per second. So I have my final x velocity and I have my final y velocity, and now I just need to find the speed. Well, we go back to our right triangle. Final velocity in the y would be downward. So it's going down like that. This is 23. x is in the positive x direction, so it's like that and this side is 42.3. So to find the hypotenuse length, 42.3, we square this side and then we square the other and square root both. Plug that into your calculator and the speed for part A should come out to be 48.3. 1, 5 meters per second. Now we have to do part B.
Now for part B, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to use different y and x positioning. yf this time is going to be 0 instead of 15. So I'm going to go back to using this second y equation. Vfy squared is equal to Viy squared, and Viy, the initial velocity, hasn't changed. So this is 15.4 squared, and then we're going to add 2 times the acceleration, which is negative 9.81, times our change in distance. Now, our final y position is 0 this time, and our initial is still 30. So we have 0 minus 30 is our change in distance, or a negative 30 is our change in distance. Plug all this into your calculator. And Vfy squared should be equal to 825.76. Square root both sides, and our final velocity in the y direction is plus or minus 28.7. But we know this thing is traveling downward, so we're going to ignore the positive version, and we're just going to say that our final velocity in the y is a negative 28.7 meters per second. So Vfy this time is a negative 28.7. Then, to make things easier, I'm going to go straight to this third x equation. Vfx is what I want to know. Vix, I already know, this is 42.3. And then we're going to add that to ax, which is 0, and then times time, which we don't know. But again, we don't care, because it's multiplied by 0. So this is all 0, which means Vfx is equal to 42.3. Now to find the speed, we need to find the magnitude of the velocity vector. So we create our triangle again. We're going down in the y, 28.7, and we're going in the positive x direction, 42.3. So to find the speed, or the magnitude of the velocity vector, we need to find our hypotenuse length, which is 42.3 squared plus 28.7 squared. And then after adding them, we take the square root. Plug that into your calculator. And you should find that the final speed is 51.12 meters per second. And that would be your answer for part B.